At this point, everybody knows what a Tesla is, but did you know that inside of every Tesla car, there are thousands of these things packed inside of its battery compartment? To be more precise, these are called 18650 battery cells. The battery cells in front of me were literally ripped out of an old Tesla, so these are legit. They kind of look like AA batteries, but to give you some sense of scale, the Tesla batteries are much beefier and bigger. For context, there are countless headlines and articles covering stories of Teslas catching on fire. So what we wanted to experiment with is how volatile these batteries are through a series of different somewhat realistic tests. We're gonna dunk it in water, drop it in a cup of gasoline, hit it with a hammer, stab it, shoot it with a gun, and light it on fire with gunpowder. Before each test, each battery will be fully charged and will have its voltage recorded before and after to see if there are any noticeable voltage drops. First up is water. All right, in this scenario, you crash your Tesla into the SeaWorld caravan that's carrying Shamu. Nothing happening so far. I don't even see anything, nothing, no bubbles. No. I'm okay, it's fine. Are tastes, you serious? Tastes a little bit like lithium. After testing the voltage of the battery, there was no noticeable change from 4.5 volts. 4.52. So that means the water has no immediate effect on the Tesla battery. The next test is gasoline. Dropping in three, two, oh! <laughs> Nothing. A oh, yes. whole bunch of nothing. Yeah, so it's been over a minute now and nothing has happened. And this makes sense because both water and gasoline are terrible conductors of electricity. At least not good enough to short the battery. But more on that later. New scenario. You're driving your Model S under an anvil. And here we go. This. Smells like broken promises. Don't breathe this. So no, it's not entirely impact proof, but surprisingly it held up really well. For the stabbing test, we're going to puncture the side of the battery using a makeshift shank David made while he served time. So in this scenario, you crashed into your grandmother's house right into her sewing kit. Do it. Should have used the vise. Because why not, we set up the shot again, but this time clamped the device a lot tighter. So what's going on inside the battery that's causing it to explode? Without getting into too much detail, we have to look at the components within a lithium ion battery. Basically, it's composed of an anode and a cathode, both of which are made from metal foil sheets. In this case, a copper foil sheet for the anode and an aluminum foil sheet for the cathode. And all you have to know is that it's super duper important that these two foils don't touch each other, because if they do, In normal conditions, the anode and cathode foils are rolled up together like a burrito, but there is an electrolyte separator keeping the two foils from ever touching. Unless, of course, there was an outside force that makes that happen, like a car crash. Or getting shivved. Alternatively, the Tesla battery has its positive and negative leads located on the top and brim of the battery. So if you wanted to, you could short the battery by bridging the terminals with a small piece of metal. For the shooting experiment, we're going to be using a Walther P22. It shoots a 22 caliber round. We're actually going to be using low velocity CCI ammunition. All we need it to do is to pierce the enclosure on the battery for it to explode. Or so we think. So beautiful. That's how they actually attach it in the Model S. Yep. Bunch of duct tape. In this scenario, you're driving your Tesla in Hong Kong. Oof. 
That sounded like a hit. Oh my god, it did. All right, so we just shot with the 22. We took the tape off, and it looks Ooh. like it, yeah, it didn't even make it through. It absorbed all of that energy. Yeah. And I don't know where the bullet went. Oh, here it is. You can see how this lead bullet smushed. That means all of the energy got transferred into the Tesla battery and still nothing happened. That's a result. How cool is that, huh? I think it passes this one. Yeah? Yeah. I wouldn't bring that back inside, but pretty cool. We're at 4.5 before and we're at 4.4. That means there was a 2% reduction in voltage after shooting it with the gun. So there was definitely something going on inside the battery. Because we had no idea how stable the battery was after getting shot, we decided to stab it and set it off for safety. Also because it's fun. Next up is gunpowder. This is the same stuff they used in muskets back in the day or in modern black powder rifles. Fuck you. There it is. Anything? No, that is one singed battery. Oh, look at that. And now we're at 4.52, hasn't budged. It's not budged. This battery is perfect, aside from smelling like barbecue. Pass. Ding. So I think it's obvious to say that the battery was not exposed to the flame long enough for it to actually do any damage. It's kind of like taking a lighter and putting it under your hand for only a second. It's not going to do anything. We also want to point out that we are not making this video to suggest EVs are dangerous or somehow worse than gas cars. There have actually been a few studies out there that show the fire risk for gas versus EVs is comparable. Really, we're just doing this to have some fun and show you guys some cool failure modes for lithium batteries. Anyways, hey, we're actually going to do a quick Q&A right now. We have a lot of comments from previous videos videos of people asking the same questions. Yeah, let me see, let me pull it up. Uh, question number one, what do you guys do for a living? Um, so the both of us actually work in tech in the San Francisco Bay Area. I work in R&D at Apple. And I've been an engineer at Tesla for a few years and then I moved over to a cool startup called Nebia. You should look them up. So next question, have you guys ever been hurt by one of your projects? Um, yes and no. For me, it was when we were testing the black powder bazooka. <laughs> um, yeah, every single time we tested it while, we're, while we were building it, we put it between two cinder blocks. So we had like a five foot pole that we'd push the trigger and it would we'd set, be hiding behind yeah, and we'd things. be hiding behind yeah. things and it would actually not go anywhere because it was so perfectly wedged between like a wall and a cinder block. Three, two, one. But we knew it was only a matter of time before one of us had to actually shoulder mount it and put it next to our heads, and I drew the short stick. Three, two, one. When I pushed the trigger, you know, I closed my eyes and that thing just went off and just flew right off my shoulder. That's what they teach you, right? When you pull a trigger, you're supposed to close your eyes. Well, my eyes are closed 99% of the time, so. Are you, oh, <laughs> are you even paying attention right now? <laughs> Yeah, and then for me, I didn't actually get injured on this one, but Ryan did, so I'm gonna count it as mine. It was the rocket-powered hula hoop. So as the name implies, we had a sugar rocket engine on the end of a hula hoop. You're supposed to bore out a hole for the fuel to eject from. I think the hole we made was too small, so the burn rate of the you know, explosive stuff in there was too fast for it to actually eject, and instead the whole thing just blew up at the same time. I was wearing this thing, but fortunately the explosion went away from me and right, right into Ryan. Into <laughs> Which <laughs> explains this. <laughs> yeah. But hey, we got actually, we actually have a I video got bad news, man. It was always like that. <laughs> Why do you guys take so long to upload? Um, kind of like what we were saying before, we have full-time jobs, so this YouTube thing is kind of just 
it's honestly just a purely a hobby. We just do it for fun and we get to do some pretty cool things. Yeah, just having a good time. Um, and also we just started a couple hardware projects of our own. So we're gonna be announcing those pretty soon. Put them online for you guys to check yeah. out. Put them on Kickstarter and they're gonna do so well. Dump all of our life savings. You have savings? <laughs> uh, last question, are you guys gay? Only on camera. But no, we're <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not gay. Uh, we're just actually really good friends. We uh, met like over ten years ago, and we've just had a similar interest in building RAM crap and just yeah, just uh, just exploring the world of engineering and each other's bottles. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you said that up too well. All right, guys, um, we got to go explore each other's buttholes, but we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. You got all the material blown out the back into the brick here. Yeah, all the electrolyte it's powder here. Don't use big words like that around me. The insides of the battery just poop themselves out. That's something I can understand. <laughs>